they've been discussing the anterior lateral pathways. Uh, these are turning pathways, um, as earlier introduced, um, take up the sensations of pain and temperature, fruit touch, pressure. Um, to be very specific, we have the, so let me just put it there. We have the anterior side and the lateral side. So on the anterior side, we're talking about crude touch, uh, pressure, while on the lateral component, we're talking about pain, and we're also talking about temperature. So um, to appreciate this, we're going to start with the lateral component. So the lateral component, also known as lateral spinal thalamic pathway, um, carries pain and temperature um, sensations. So what we have is, of course, we need to start with the receptors. So the receptors in this case uh, for both are uh, free nerve endings, but in one we have uh, nociception or nociceptive receptors, and in the other we have uh, temperature uh, thermal receptors. Um, a few things that you must identify is, or you must know is that they follow the same anatomical pathway. Um, So they, they follow the same anatomical pathway, but they have different they have different receptors. All right now um, we are going to talk about pain in depth, but I just want to highlight a few things. So for pain. Um, we see that it has two types of neurons that are involved. We have the air deltas for uh, fast pain, and then we have the C fibers involved for slow pain. And um, the fast pain is normally from the skin uh, and usually due to mechanical and or thermal stimulation. While uh, when you talk about slow pain, you're really talking about viscera and you're also alluding to um, chemical stimuli. So the chemical stimulation really arises from the presence of acids such as the bradykinin, the histamines, and uh, potassium due to the injured cells. And these are things that we have learned uh, during blood physiology. Um, but it is also potentiated um, by things such as uh, prostaglandins and substance P. But in any case, the idea is you have different receptors that then go through a similar pathway. So it's like um, you're starting from a different uh, point, receptor 1, receptor 2, but they will follow the same highway to go to the CNS and um, go to particular parts of it for perception of pain or perception of temperature change and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so we're just going to follow what this pathway is. So again, we're going to follow the orders. We're going to follow the first order, second order, and the third order. Uh, so in this case, what we have is 
we're going to start with the lateral component, as I said. So the lateral spinothalamic, uh, which carry pain and temperature. So what you have is you're going to have a stimulation, which is pain or temperature. Uh, through the receptors, and the receptors, of course, we said they are the three nerve endings. And um, from here, let me just draw out. Okay, so this is our cross sectional. Okay, so we have our receptors, which are the three nerve endings. And then we have it coming into, so this is the sensory neuron, which is also the first order, coming into the uh, spinal uh, cord, and of course going to the dorsal horn component. So um, once it enters um, the dorsal uh, horn, you find that it terminates in this area and it terminates in a very specific uh, component known as the substantia gelatinosa. Um, so upon entering the spinal cord, I'll repeat that, they uh, not only do they terminate in the substantia gelatinosa, but they also make um, local tracks going up and down, all right, going up and down the spinal cord. Uh, now, these are the, 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 the local tracts that are known as the tracts of leisure. And when they reach here, we say that they do terminate. And in particular, with, what did we say? We said they do this in the substantia gelatinosa, so substantia all right, so um, once they terminate, then we have our second orders coming. So they terminate on second order, so this is in a, a neuronal body or soma or cell body. This is going to go, now we're talking about the lateral component. So it's going to move to the other side and go to the lateral component. And when it reaches the lateral component of the spinal cord, it is then going to go up. All right? So uh, this is the first one, where we have the first order coming into uh, the spinal cord. And it synapses onto the second order. But also we see that the first order makes some local tracts that are known as the tracts of reserve. The second component is that of the antero. All right. So in the anterior component, also known as the anterospinothalamic um, tract, we see that we carry a uh, Crude touch, all right, crude touch sensation. So this anterior spinothalamic tract also comes in, you have a, let me see if I can use a different color. So you do have a, you do have a receptor that comes through Okay, so it also has the cell body in the uh, dorsal root ganglion. It also makes the local tract and also ends in the substantia uh, gelatinosa. Um, and then it also then synapses on the second order. Now, this second order, they also cross, but they move to the anterior component and then go up. All right? So these are also second order. 
only that these are anterior whilst these are lateral. Okay, so this is how the first order and the second order of both the anterior and the lateral components move. Um, before I go on, maybe I, I should, it is worth mentioning that there's another track that arises um, between these two, okay? So somewhere in between here, you find another track that arises. So we have this first order coming in, and then it crosses over, but it arises from this area and goes up. And uh, it goes up uh, specifically um, as the spinal tecto uh, tract, all right? Uh, it goes to the tectum. Uh, so it's just worth mentioning, it's really, the tectum is in uh, the midbrain and it's for auditory and visual reflectors. So we'll limit ourselves to the two that we're talking about here, but I just needed you to know that this happens. So once um, the second orders uh, reach the medulla, all right, so once they reach the medullary area, you, you find that there is fusion that takes place to form uh, the spinal laminiferous. All right, so we'll go all the way to the medulla, okay? Uh, and then we'll take both of them and remind ourselves that they fuse, okay? So they fuse and form what is known as the spinal laminiscus. All right. Uh, so once they form the spinal laminiscus, they then go to the thalamus. Okay. So we're still with the second order. And in the thalamus, we're talking about the ventral posterior lateral uh, nucleus. Again. So, uh, from the thalamus, first of all, let's see what happens in the thalamus. So now they have formed one, and they'll terminate in the thalamus. And then in the thalamus, you have your second, your third order. All right? So these third orders then go to the internal capsule, like we talked about in our uh, dorsal column pathway. So they, they go to, uh, through the internal capsule and then spun out uh, to the cortex, all right? So they spun out. Okay, they also innovate other components such as the emotional areas. That is why you're able to feel very emotional uh, once you are in pain. And also the insula um, where we also have the autonomic responses going on. All right, so I'm just going to go through this again uh, so that we are very um, conversant with what is going on here. So I'll clean that up and then just say that in the spinal cord, we will have the first order come in. We'll use one pain. Okay, and pain is going to terminate in the substance. The pain fibers or the fibers carrying the pain sensation will terminate in the substantia gelatinosa. Okay, not only would they do that, but they will also form tracts of reserve. Once they are in the substantia gelatinosa, they are going to terminate on the second order. So we're talking about pain will go to the lateral side and then they will go up okay then we also say we have the second one which does come in from another receptor so we said crude touch which also goes in makes its track but mainly in here it also terminates on the second orders and these second orders go to the 
anterior component. Okay, I just want to be very specific on how I draw these. Alright, I'm going to draw that again. So they go to the anterior component and then go up. Alright, then when they reach the medulla, I'm just going to get rid of that. When they reach the medullary area, they form one. Okay, sorry about that. They form one fiber or one bundle. Okay. And this bundle, do you remember what the name is? Yes, the spinal meniscus. So this bundle then goes to the thalamus, ventral posterior lateral component. Okay, so it rises as one bundle, synapses in the thalamus onto the last order, which is the third order, which goes through to the cortex. Okay, so again, this is very different from what is happening in the dorsal column. In the dorsal column, we have uh, the first order come in, go to the dorsal component, they go up, and then in the medulla, what they do is they cross. So these are still the first order. When they cross, they go up, get, that's still the first order, which is enough from the second order in here. So these are second orders. They go up to the thalamus and synapse on the third order. All right? So this is very different. In the first one, the lateral and the anterior lateral, we had them synapse right up at entry point. Whilst in the dorsal, the entry point, they go up until the medulla, and in the medulla, that is where you find that the synapse. So the first synapse is in the medulla here, whilst the first synapse is at entry. Okay, so what about fibers coming from the face? What are the first, second, and third orders? That's going to be our assignment then we'll go over it the next time. In the next video, we'll talk about the high centers and uh, what, where sensory parts are. Okay.